you planning to spend on Papa's birthday present? Well, I've saved up about ten dollars. Why? Well, uh, how would you like to pool your money with mine and we'll buy him a really great gift from his two girls? Well, how much do you have? Well, um, I was planning to spend ten dollars, too. All right. But, uh, all I saved up was five and a half. <laughs> In that case, Patty, I think I'll, uh, just go ahead and buy Uncle Martin a present on my own. He's done so much for me. Patty, don't you think that's being a little selfish? Selfish? What difference does it make how much each of us puts in? If we can get a really great gift for Papa, isn't that what counts? If I had $100 and you only had a quarter, I'd go in with you. Hey, Patty, I'll go in with you. Yeah? How much do you have? A dollar twenty-five. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. The ballet russe and crepe Suzette. Our patty loves to rock and roll. The hot dog makes her lose control. And what a wild duet. Still the cousins. Identical cousins. Then you'll find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins. are ideal for Papa. What's so ideal about them? They're all under five dollars. <laughs> Listen to this. A fluffy little dog that is really a transistor radio. You turn his nose to the right for volume control, you press in his eyes for AM, FM, and you zip open his stomach to change the batteries. What do you think? I think the ASPCA should be notified at once. <laughs> well, it's not easy to find something he doesn't have. I know, dear. Maybe it's time to open the hinting season. Can we feel him out to see what he wants? Good idea. Where is he, in the den? But he's working. It might not be a very good time to disturb him. That's okay. When I'm working, I love to be disturbed. I try to be subtle. Mom? You are looking at a walking web of cunning. Doris Hartley's Uncle Frank? I don't even know Doris Hartley. Oh, well, uh, it's not important. See, her uncle is having a birthday, and he's one of those men who has everything. So uh, I told her I'd come up with a few suggestions, and uh, I thought I'd get a man's point of view. Okay. What would you think of getting him something for his car? Well, it depends. What? A horn. Well, that could come in very handy. Oh, no, this is a special horn. It goes, <laughs> like a bull moose. It's a novelty item for the man who has everything. You mean everything except a female moose. You don't think it would be a kick to have? <laughs> well, not in this state, honey. It's against the law. Oh. Okay. How would you like a canasta shuffler? How would I like it? I mean, how would you like it for Doris Hartley's uncle? Well, it sounds fine. If he plays canasta. Oh. I think he plays poker. Mm. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he does. Okay. Here's an idea that's really boss. Foot vibrator. Uh, does her uncle walk a lot? No. Come to think of it, he sits a lot. Well, in that case, you got the wrong kind of vibrator. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, honey, that's Jim Fraser. I'm afraid I'm gonna be busy for a little while. We have to run over the Sunday feature lineup for the next few weeks. Well, I'm sorry I wasn't much help. Oh, sure you are, Papa. Now I know three things not to get. To tell Doris not to get. See you later. Hi, Jim. Hi, Martin. Come on into the den. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, Patty. She's knocking herself out, trying to figure out what I'd like for my birthday present. Oh, it's the daddy bird's birthday. Yeah, in a couple of weeks. Oh, Patty's really come up with some wild ideas. 
Like an automobile horn that sounds like a bull moose. Huh? Now, who'd want that? <laughs> Someone who's looking for a female moose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Here's the tentative schedule you asked me to rough out. I hate to see the kids spending their hard-earned money on me. I don't mind about my wife. That's my hard-earned money. Besides, you always get a lot of things you just don't use. Not if you're clever about it. What do you mean? Well, I always make a list, see? Then I leave it laying around somewhere where they'll run into it. Uh-huh. Last year, it took them about ten minutes to get the idea. Where'd you leave the list? I pasted it to the bathroom mirror. Very clever. Yeah? Well, all I know is I didn't get stuck with a bull moose horn. <laughs> Shall we uh, get to work? Right. Hey, I think I got it figured out. The schedule? No, no. How to throw a hint to Patty without being too obvious. Well, let's see. Something nice and cheap. And then I'll just tear it out of the magazine and leave it around where she can find it, see? Now you're getting the idea. Yeah. Hey, how about this? Why would I want a personal oxygen tank? Well, it's just right there. It's great for hangovers. Hey, well, I don't really think I need it, Jim. Besides, it's kind of expensive. Yeah, but if you only use it on the morning after New Year's Eve, it'd be worth it. <laughs> now, here's something. Swiss pocket knife. Eight different blades, including knife, fork, spoon, and leather punch. Three ninety-five. Think it's worth it? At 50 cents a blade, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, boy, Ross, are you gonna get it? What'd I do now? How many times has Papo told you not to tear things out of magazines? I didn't tear that out. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. Wait a minute. This is a matter of life and death. Yeah? Why? Because I found this on Papo's desk, and if you didn't tear it out, that means he did. And if I can get him something for less than $5, I'm home free. Let me see. Swiss pocket knife. Eight different blades, including knife, fork, spoon, and leather punch. What would Papa want with this? D with. What do you think? And I suppose the leather punch is so he can make extra holes in his belt when he's through eating. Very funny. I guess it does seem like a pretty flaky gift for a grown man. Hey, wait a minute. You're looking at the wrong side. Telescopic rifle. Yeah, that's what Dad clipped the ad out for. For the discriminating sportsman. Oh, boy, what a birthday gift that'd make. Yeah. Hand car stock of French walnut. Oh, groovy. Engraved trigger guard. Mmm, dreamy. $99. Oh, boy. And 50 cents. You really think that Swiss knife is so bad? $99.50? Oh, boy. Exactly what I said to Ross, right, Ross? Yeah. All we could come up with was $6.30. It's just plain stupid. I don't think wanting to get your father a gift like this is stupid. Oh, Kathy, I knew you'd see it that way. Kathy, $10. Yeah. $83.20 to go. Go, go! Thanks, Kathy. It's a marvelous gift, but even if we did pool our money... I know I... what you're going to say. $99.50 is an outlandish amount of money to pay for Papa's gift. No, it isn't, but I... Oh, then you agree it would be a great gift. Well, of course it oh, would, Oh, Mom, but... I knew you'd see it our way. Now, just a minute. Ninety-nine fifty is a lot of money. I know, but Ross and I have it all figured out. You want to tell her? I yield to the champ. Okay. We figured if you'd let us have an advance on our allowance for a few months, we could make it with no trouble at all. Oh, I'm afraid not, dear. I won't have you skipping lunches to make up for it. Mom, we don't mind starving for a thing like that, do we, Ross? That Swiss knife is getting to look better and better. <laughs> Mom, answer me one question. How much money were you going to spend on Papa's gift? Oh, I was going to get him some shirts for about $25. $58.20 to go. Mom, could you stretch the 25 a little? A little, yes, but what you're asking for could result in a severe strain. Please, Mom, I'm only asking you to think about it. Honey, I will think about it. Oh, Mom, <laughs> yes, great. <laughs> ah, I see the kitchen cabinet's in session. Hi, honey. Hi, dear. Uh, I'd like to make a motion for an early dinner. Jim is coming over around 8 to run over the feature lineup. Are you sure that's the way soupy sales got started? <laughs> Want me to help you hang up your hat and coat? Oh, boy. When that blabbermouth wants to help, watch out. <laughs> Ross, if you say one word... I didn't word... say what we were going to get him, just that we decided. Oh, what's the use? Now I suppose you're going to try and worm it out of us. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Don't you want a little hint? <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, I'll tell you this. When you open that package, you really flip. 
I will? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you use it, you'll get a real charge. Ross. What did I say? He just means you'll get a bang out of Patty. it. Patty. <laughs> All right, you two, that's enough. You want to spoil the surprise? Dinner in 15 minutes, dear. Oh, good. I'm starved. Well, at least that birthday present will get you out of doors, which won't hurt you one bit. Out of doors? It can't be used inside? Well, I don't think the neighbors would approve if you started firing. Mom! <laughs> wouldn't approve. I just don't understand. I thought I laid out that schedule pretty clearly. Oh, no, no. I, I mean about the birthday present. The neighbors wouldn't approve. Now, what does that mean? Are you sure they saw the ad for the Swiss knife? Yeah, I'm positive. I left it in here in the den. I found it out there in the living room. The neighbors wouldn't approve. <sighs> Look, old buddy, do you know that this is the second night we've spent on this layout? Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Where were we? Oh, we're trying to figure out what to do with an article on college football. Can't be used indoors. What? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I don't understand why the neighbors wouldn't approve... of a telescopic rifle. <laughs> Uh-oh. They looked at the wrong side. Hand-carved stock of French walnut. What a beauty. Well, 9950 it ought to be. What a family you got. You know, that's some sweet present. You must be kidding. I wouldn't dream of letting him spend that kind of money on me. But I put a stop to this right now. Mom, you promised me buying the rifle. I said I'd think it over. You see, the trouble is, honey, I don't have enough in the household money. And if I take it out of the joint account, he might ask me about it. Tell him you bought a hat. Patty, we're trying to do something nice for your father, not demoralize him. What about my morale and Kathy's and even Ross? If we don't get him that rifle, we'll all be shattered. I know how I can do it. How? I bought a coat just last week. It still has the tags on it. I'll return it. Oh, Mom, I knew you'd come through. And you know when you'll get your reward? On Papa's birthday, when you see that look on his face. <laughs> Gotta let him buy me that rifle. Well, I'm glad you changed your mind, because it's a beauty. No, no, that isn't it. It's just that they built up such a head of enthusiasm about it that, well, I can't put a damper on it. Do you know what Natalie is going to do? She is giving back a coat that she bought in order to finance my present. No kidding. Hmm. Well, summer's coming on, so she really... Jim, I can't <laughs> let her do it. Okay. Look. This piece on Mars is gonna leave us a little short. So what we need is a nice 500-word filler. I've got it. The filler? No, no, how to solve the present problem. <laughs> I'll just give the money to Nat and the kids. It's that simple. <laughs> All right, now, let's see. Say, how about an editorial cartoon for filler? You can't do it. Well, don't you think the boss will care for it? I don't think Natalie and the kids would care for it. <laughs> Natalie and the kids don't even read the feature section. I'm talking about handing them the money. It would be insulting. Jim, I'm not going to just hand them the money. Give me credit for a little tact. Yeah, well, how are you going to do it? Well, I'll think of something. Well, let's get back to this now. We don't have all night. Now, listen, here's a cartoon by Fletcher that's very, very good. In fact, I've been thinking of running his stuff daily. Hey, that's a great idea. We've always got this problem of filler, and this would be the perfect solution. It's like finding money on the street. Would Fletcher be interested? See, you just gave me an idea. About how to get Fletcher interested? Jim, can't you keep your mind on one thing for more than a minute? I'm talking about giving the money to Natalie and the kids without their knowing about it. Oh. Out of the mouths of babes. And newspaper man. <laughs> here, honey, just for a minute. Yeah, Papa? Uh, we ought to have the gardener trim that juniper. Uh, don't you think it looks a little raggedy? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have Mom tell him about it. 
Uh, well, uh, Patty, um... Uh, what's new? <laughs> you mean since we talked five minutes ago? Oh. <laughs> uh, say, say, listen, why don't we take a little walk, huh? Okay, where, over to the park? No, no, right here. In the backyard? <laughs> sure. <laughs> You know, uh, it's very pleasant out here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice day. Yeah? <laughs> I love a good walk, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Papa, hmm? can you keep a secret? Well, of course. We're breaking out of this place tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, have you smelled those flowers? Have you ever smelled them? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're wonderful. Oh, but I, I mean recently. Well, <laughs> come to think of it. Oh, no, no, not those, honey. I, I, I meant those, uh, the, the, the little one down there. Oh, those? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, they smell great. Uh, uh, what's that? What? Th that. Uh, oh, those dumb kids next door are always throwing that candy wrapper. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't think that's a candy wrapper. No, it's probably some kind of... Money. Oh, oh is that what it is? Two fifty-dollar bills. Pop, was it real? Oh, well, uh, I'll tell you, this one is real. And uh, so, so is this one. Hey, uh, uh, talk about pennies from heaven, Patty. You found a jackpot right here on Earth. <laughs> Congratulations. You don't mean I can keep this. Well, why not? I mean, finders keepers, you know. Papa, you're not serious. I'm not? This money has to be turned into the police. Well, well, no, no, wait a minute. Do you remember that editorial you wrote last month? Uh, which one? The one about cheaters who keep lost things instead of turning them into the police. Oh, well, yeah, of course. You're but, uh, absolutely right, and I'm going to take this to the police station myself right now. No, no, well, well, Patty, don't do that. I mean... I'll turn it in. No, Papa, you're too busy. No, no, honey. I have to go over to the precinct anyway. I, I may write another editorial. About cheaters? No, about innocent victims. <laughs> how long you hold on to lost things before you give them back to the finder? Well, that depends on what it is. Some things we hold for three months. Three months? Yeah, things like bicycles. Oh, well, this isn't a bicycle. This is cash. Oh, well, that's different. Yeah? Cash we hold six months. <laughs> well, there goes my mother's coat. What? Well, you see, we were hoping we could use the money to buy my father a birthday gift, but we can't wait six months. Well, let's get some of the details. Now, how much was it, and who found it? A hundred dollars, but my father turned it in a couple of days ago. Wow, well, that's different. Oh. What's his name? Lane. L-A-N-E. Martin Lane. Lane, Lane, Lane. No, I don't see it here. Oh. Well, uh, maybe he turned it in another precinct. Wouldn't matter. This is a citywide lost and found list. Oh. Well, uh, maybe, uh... Maybe he turned it in anonymously, you know, like in a plain white envelope. In that case, we'd have a record of the hundred dollars having been turned in. Sergeant, my father said he turned in that money and either your list is wrong or... Or what? Or I refuse to say anything on the grounds that it might incriminate me. <laughs> Oh, hi, hon. Uh, see, where's Patty? Oh, she went downtown. What are you doing home? Well, I... Are you returning that? Um, yes, it's, it's just not my color. I thought you were wild about blue. <laughs> that was last year. Oh, I, I like you in blue. <laughs> Honey, my mind's made up. You, well, you're not going to take it back today. Well, I'm going to play bridge, and the store's right on the way. And that, um... Say, listen, do you remember that money that Patty found a couple of days ago? Yeah. Well, 
I just got it back from the police department. Nobody claimed it. Is that right? Yeah, how about that? You really like me in blue. Oh, yeah. That's good enough for me. <laughs> Since I'm um, going to the bridge game anyway, I might just as well wear it. Why not? How does it look? For last season's color, not bad. <laughs> What's that for? The police department. <laughs> oh, Mom, am I glad you're home? What are you doing with that coat on? I'll tell you about it later, dear. I've got to go now. Mom, you've got to put the tag back on or they'll never take it back if you wear Daddy, it. Daddy, i got wonderful news for you, honey. Nobody claimed that money you found. It's yours. Mine? Yep, I just came from the precinct. Well, Patty, aren't you happy about getting the money back? Happy isn't the word for it, Papa. I'm overwhelmed. Hello? Oh, hi, Jim. No, not yet. <laughs> but I think they're going to give it to me right now. Listen, thank you very much for giving me that gun case to go with it. That was very generous of you. Well, uh, why don't you come over in about a half an hour and you can see it then. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Papa? Yeah? Uh, before you go back inside, I have something for you. Here. Oh. Oh. I what? know why you did what? all this, Papa. You do? Because you're so anxious for me to have all the things I want. But honestly, Papa, those things don't mean as much to me as other things. Patty, what are you talking about? I, uh... Went down to the police station yesterday and they told me you didn't return that money. Oh. Well, Patty. No, let, you let don't me... have to explain, Papa. I'm sure you, you had a very good reason for doing what you did. Oh, Patty, I have to tell you. No, Papa. Um, this isn't much, but uh, it's from me to you. Patty. Now, Patty. This is one time when a father insists on the right to explain. Papa, I'm so embarrassed. I didn't know it was your money. I don't know what to say. There's no need to say anything, honey. You just gave me the best birthday present I could wish for. A knife? Well, that's not what I mean. You gave me the kind of a birthday present that every father longs for. You see, honey, parents knock themselves out, trying to raise their kids in a way that they think is right. But nobody has a secret formula. You do the best you can. You try by example, by teaching, by love. And then you just hope. <laughs> You hope that one day all of those talks about right and wrong will sink in. But if one day your daughter trusts you the way you trusted me, even though you thought I was doing wrong, you get the greatest gift of all. Thank you, Patty. Happy birthday, Papa. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, what did Patty say when you explained that the money was really yours? Well, I'm not sure, but I think she was a little disappointed. Well, it must be a rude shock to discover that your father wouldn't steal for you. <laughs> hey, guess what she gave me? I'm afraid to. You mean? Yeah. Does it really have a knife, fork, spoon, and leather punch? Oh, no, that's the deluxe model. That is a knife, fork, spoon, and a pizza cutter. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. The Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. Walk 
talk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your 